Code metrics. I don't know. No. No. Like, <laughs> but yeah. you know, it, is, it an, is it an interesting <laughs> discussion of, of, of why? No. Maybe. Is it just, does, do people think that? Oh, yeah. Or is it, do you uh, care about any code metrics for a project is the question. Uh, like lines of code, number of files, number of offers. Uh, we can talk a little bit about it, see if, it's, yeah. if it turns interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, uh, for me, like the question is no. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know any like developer that does. That cares about, yeah. I mean, so I think when you are a beginning developer, sometimes you fetishize the number of lines of code something is, right? Yeah. And you could either say, I am so productive. Today I wrote 2,000 lines of code. It was great. It just sprung into existence. I'm such a badass. Or you can say, ah, I, you know, I expressed this super sort of, you know, complex thing in only two lines of reactive yeah, yeah, JS yeah. or some shit like that. And no one can read it, but you think you're so clever. Um, but there's something... But some, that's maybe not... I don't know. But, but I wanted to explore a little bit why. Right. Uh, because why do you feel... I think it is because it is so tangible. Mm -hmm. It's very tangible quality. Right. Like it's, it's a completely wrong quality. It doesn't matter. But right. it is a number that can go up or down. Yes. It, it makes... I, I've written a lot of code today or I've removed a lot of code today or I've, right. uh, I've written this in 67 characters and it used to be 400. Right. Uh, it makes you feel good. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I love just sitting down, uh, you know, in the morning and uh, by lunchtime, I have, you know, 15 new classes and it all dances together and it worked on the first try. Yeah. It feels great. Um, but I don't know, like, I, I think maybe in the, in the way the question is, uh, is based, it's like, oh, these are metrics. Yeah. So um, I think in my, uh, I took some courses uh, in, you know, computer science and I don't, there were some where they were like, oh, hey, uh, you, you know, for these serious projects, we're tracking all the metrics to somehow say something about code quality or productivity or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they also pointed out that number of like, lines of code is a terrible metric. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know what a better one is. But it's, it's like, uh, I mean, lines of code, just like when, when you get like down a little bit at an abstraction level, it's like, it can be a smell. If you have a class, it is 7,000, oh, yeah. uh, 15,000 lines long. That smells, right? That's like, oh, this is not as also, good as it could be. Like, for instance, like, let's say that you, there's also in, in programming, like, m when you're working on a product mm -hmm. uh, that has been for a long time, like, you, like you, it's very common that you change code. Oh, yes. Uh, and That's what you mostly do. And then, like, if you count, like, remove a change code is basically uh, change code is basically removed lines and added lines. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you had, like, if you change something and you do a big refactoring and you do blah, it's mm -hmm. a lot of code change. That right. is also like a code, like a code smell. That if mm -hmm. you have to make it, uh, or might be that you, in order to make change, mm -hmm. you have to, like change all the way right. the place like yes. that means that you have a non-orthogonal system mm -hmm. if you listen to the is a gang of four that talks about the non-orthogonal system or is it clean code i haven't read a book in years no. uh. <laughs> but a non-orthogonal non orthogonal system is where like yeah. adding changing a right. thing means that you can change this area but it and, and, right and, there's a good principle uh and it kind of boils down to um if you have one, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is what, what it is. Uh, I think it's like a class or a method should have exactly one reason to change. Yeah, is one of these one principles. One reason to change, All right? And I don't think that's always true. No, uh, but it, that, that's, but it is a good sort of you know a, a good statement of intent. Uh, that's, a, that's a kind of sort of good heuristic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, because I mean, it's like uh, if you take something as simple as duplication of code or concepts. Oh, I could talk about that a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. you don't have to because yeah. it's so universally agreed that that's bad, right? Uh, or is, is it? Is it? <laughs> have you duplicated anything recently? What are you doing? Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, no, but I mean, just like for the basis of this discussion, yeah. uh, if you duplicate things, um, uh, and then you apply this principle, oh, a thing should have exactly one reason to change. Yeah. Um, 
if it's duplicated, now you have to change it in more than one place. Yes. If you want to change whatever the overall thing is, it's like I love the the the, the, sure, the but concept duplic- of yeah. like capturing a concept. Yeah. Like I've captured this concept here, and this concept now, like I can speak like uh, in a class. I mean, I know you JavaScript guys don't use classes anymore. Uh, uh, they, a lot of people maybe, use classes. I don't know if the yeah. segue, but no. Uh, but it's like, oh, you've captured it in like either a method or a class or something, and it's like, oh, now I can ask the, the, this guy intelligent questions about what it is and what it should be doing, yeah. right? And it, it's like you can extend the concept because it's in one place. Then no. that's really good. Um, I want to make like a nuance comment because uh, I think that removing duplication can mm-hmm. also lead to an uh, unorthogonal system. Interesting. Uh, let's say that like I have a, a a very good way of decoupling things is mm-hmm. copy and paste. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, like Wait. And let's say sure. that yeah, let's say that you have two pieces of of code. Right. Uh, and you, uh, like, they do different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and let's say that it's, uh, I don't know, an ordering system and a payment system, right? Right. Uh, and you, let's say you make a, need to make a change in the payment system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, that there is some code duplication between those two. Right. There's some uh, stuff about value-added tax or something to your order. Yeah, That's exactly. Relevant to both variants. And uh, you just change that in the. But if if the change is just related to the the payment system, mm-hmm. then you can just change that there. Right. Uh, because the the code that is is duplicated wasn't really they weren't really right. valid. They're very decoupled. Right. Uh, but. Uh, they just it, happen to be the same at a point in time. Exactly. Now changing. Exactly. That is the happy case for mm-hmm. duplication because there sure. is one that yeah, it's yeah. important to recognize. The bad case is that if the change that you want to make is applicable to both of those systems, yeah. then it is re- very good to have that, uh, uh, right. like in in a in a like yeah. non-duplicated place, like a function or a, or another of like class. Or it's a, like, oh, there's a, you know, calculating the total price of the order needs to be done both to pay the order and to display what it should be precisely. on the screen or something like that. And yeah. the case that I want to talk about is mm-hmm. the case where you pull this thing up mm-hmm. in a shared function, right? but you kind of pull in a little bit too much. Yes. You overgeneralize. You misrepresent what is actually common yes, between them. Yes, exactly. You miss the, the actual... The, you, you don't... A good way of seeing the general case is to allow duplication to arise. Yes. Uh, and, uh, like, in order for you to, like... Mm-hmm. Wait, the general problem to uh, evolve. Right. Uh, but so, sometimes you don't do that. You, you just feel like, oh no, I see the general right. case. I I can pull this up and and mm-hmm. I can foresee the future because I've done this kind of thing. Before. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, but you that 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 is it's extremely common that that fails. Yeah. Uh, so you end up with this uh, thing that in order so you, like when you find yourself in the situation where you want to change the payment system, mm-hmm. but due to the fact that so much stuff lives in the, the, the general thing, because you have pulled too much things into the general thing, right. you now have to, oh shit, now I have to change the, the, the general thing mm-hmm. instead. And yeah, oh, uh, I but... have to change the API of that thing. Right. Now I have to change both the payment system, the general thing, and the mm-hmm. uh, uh, the ordering system, and right. maybe even ten other systems. Right, it has a knock on effect uh, because you have said that this thing is, you know, uh, generally applicable. Yeah, and then it starts not being generally applicable, or there's like, oh, there's like a one difference between them. Yeah, and you have failed to elegantly capture what exactly. the difference is in some way. Yeah, so I think that. It, like, Everybody agrees that uh, duplication is is generally a dangerous thing, mm-hmm. but uh, I think that we also have to recognize that there is a certain uh, risk with yes. generalization. Like people think that removing duplication is free and risk free. No, like it's uh, not. Yeah, and uh, that is a uh, that's a big one for me. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you often end up with very uh, if it's not a, a slam dunk sort of concept, you end up with these. Uh, I mean, I think the 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 sibling of this of this 
problem or, or, or concept is uh, naming, right? Yes. Uh, oh, because yes. Because if you don't name this uh, thing that you've broken out in yes. a very, very yes. clear way, yes. if it doesn't say exactly what it is, it's like, oh, yeah, process order, process order, payment uh, data, like some shit like that. What is that? Yes. What does that do? Exactly. You don't know. Do stuff. <laughs> uh, sum up uh, total for German VAT, like whatever. Like Yeah, but that's at least what? a vague name. Oh, yeah. The worst one is where it's like get order, but oh. the fucker does some mutation oh, under yeah, yeah, uh, in yeah. the hood because, oh, no, I need to add mm-hmm. this mutation and, oh, it's in this function and you add it. And now the... the it completely... means sort of place order, but not really... Yeah. yeah, query command separations is really good. You should use that. No, what is that? Uh, oh, query command separation. It just means that uh, uh, so you, you can have queries. Yeah. Like you ask things like get order. Yep. It returns the order. Uh, and you have commands, which is change it. In some oh, way. yeah. You uh, perform a mutation on the system. Mm. And a good principle is that uh, you should separate queries and commands. So, um, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, so, that's so very that, that way uh, you may have a command that's something like, um, I don't know, place order, for example, that's a yeah. command. Um, but in that method, you might have queries like, oh, get the cost of the mm-hmm. order or, or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the overarching uh, kind of reasoning for this is that um, if uh, the case you describe where you have a query, uh, yeah. get order and it does something else yeah. it uh, changes the mutated state yep. um, that is an, unin- an unintended consequence, a side effect yeah. right? and uh, that's how bugs arise because you thought it just like uh, return something, yeah. but it also did something that you didn't anticipate, and now you have a bug. But we like uh, to be play the devil's advocate here. Like nobody yeah. is arguing uh, for those things. Like no, uh, that's like, true. the argument it's would true. say like, oh, you, but you should just not have made that mistake in the first place. Oh yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. but the problem is that uh, yeah, sorry, like, that's yeah. like the architecture uh, zealot of uh, Christmas past came down, and I just had to shout about separating queries. And yeah, but, but but <laughs> like uh, I. Uh, uh, the thing with uh, naming right. like, is that naming is, is very hard to yes, do. it's very hard. So once you start, okay, I, you think that, ah, this is, I'm just going to break this out into a variable or I'm just right. going to break this out into a function just to yeah. like, make things. Uh, and then you have to name it. Then you have to yes. give it a cohesive name. And that is surprisingly hard and time-consuming to get right. Yes. And sometimes it's not even possible because it, the you thing... might not know what it is. You know its yeah. place in the system, but you haven't written enough of the rest of the code to know how this thing will be yeah. used later on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think my 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 favorite principle for naming things is that you, is that you must always tell the truth. Ah. Everything must always tell the truth. Like uh, a name uh, should not say something that it is not, uh, or you know. Uh, it, it has to work both when you uh, process it on like a global level. You yeah. can ask it a question, and it has to work locally. Yeah. Uh, if you like, without the surrounding context, like without the assumptions. Basically, whenever you name something or um, do anything, you have a lot of assumptions about what this is. Yeah. Like if you say order, uh, there's like a bunch of assumptions mm-hmm. about what is that? Yeah. Well, what are we doing? This is an ordering system, and there's a I sure. Don't know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but I want to like, uh, the thing with that, I think that most people can, yeah, you should not have your uh, functions lie. I think that most people can, uh, oh, yeah. agree no with one that. say, oh, I like lying. But functions. I would like, in order for that to work, I would add a second commandment. Yes, <laughs> like, yes. no, we're giving commandments and all like, right. <laughs> but, uh, I, I would add that you, you cannot, uh, Methods can also be very vague. Yeah, it must say exactly what yeah. it is. Because, uh, for instance, like I, I, yeah, I have this uh, terminology that I like to refer to. Um, I learned it from Wikipedia oh, called uh-huh. weasel words. Oh, I've talked about yes. this before, uh-huh. uh, and it's just terms that kind of, sort of, mm-hmm. says that like it's like appeal to this undefined yeah. authority. It sounds good, and yeah, yeah, it sounds like it means something, but really doesn't, uh, and. Uh, Developer uh, weasel words are manager, mm-hmm. uh, utils. Like u- utils is kind of obvious that it is. It's kind of honest. Like yeah, yes, yeah. this is my pile of shite. But yeah. manager, like it's 
it deals with other objects mm. or something like it's very. I, I think if you're going to use manager, uh, you have to on a project level agree what a manager is. Yeah. Uh, in game programming, uh, you do use the word manager yeah. uh, sometimes. Yeah. If you actually have a definition uh, in your team, it basically means it's a singleton and it deals with uh, stuff you know that is valid. Uh, you know, uh, within a context, as the game progresses, it doesn't go. Wait a minute, you, manager do you does have, not go do, away. Yeah. Uh, do you have a, like? Do you have a, an actual definition of manager? Sure. I mean, uh, in my project, yeah. this is not uh, like the global okay, definition enough, of what yeah. it is. Mm. Uh, but basically, uh, like an example, let's see, a uh, user data manager, for All example, right. mm. would be like, oh, what does that do? Uh, it probably keeps track of the user's data and saves it and loads it. Yeah. Um, enemy spawning manager. Is that ambiguous? What do you think it does? Enemy spawning manager. Enemy spawning manager. Mm -hmm. Like it spawns and it, like, okay, it's, uh, I guess, all right, it's, a, I imagine it being a thing that sits in place and is responsible for spawning the uh, enemies. It feels like it's something mm -hmm. that uh, is, is there. But yes. it felt like, couldn't you just say en enemy, spawner? enemy spawner? Yeah, I could. But now we're getting... Um, now we could... Uh, Unless manager has a specific meaning. Yeah, so for like me... In your if project. I, so, if, so if I came across my own project, uh, or you know, a project I didn't know, and I saw enemy spawner versus enemy spawning manager, yeah. I would think that enemy spawning manager has the... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the logic for how do you spawn an enemy... Uh, you know, it would be like it would know uh, what what needs to happen with the enemy for it to to be in a good state and so on. Yeah. Uh, or delegate that, or be responsible for that. Enemy spawner might be you might have more than one enemy spawner. Mm. Uh, you could have like an enemy that's like makes other enemies, and that could have an enemy spawner. Uh, but yeah, to me, the meaning uh, when you say manager, I think singleton. Yeah. But that's like very specific to gaming. That's not always true. Yeah, but a singleton um, is, is, on the other hand, a term that uh, but, very specifically means something. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, so it's basically something that has more of an overall responsibility or manages like uh, the life cycle that is independent of uh, any, any one thing. It's a yeah. little, little big, a little big, sure. But uh, it's like basically the important thing is that all the words leading up to the word manager is just are descriptive. Yeah. Um, so you could say, uh, uh, like for the enemy spawning example, you could imagine that the yeah. enemy spawner actually is the guy who knows when an enemy should be spawned. Yeah. But that not, might not be true. It might be more like an enemy factory yeah. or something like that. Sure. But yeah, anyway, I don't always use manager for these things. But it, I, I'm just saying that it can be a good word if you agree on what it means. Yeah, if it, it, is, then, if it actually is defined, it sure. With some very specific stuff yeah. to avoid confusion. Other words in the name as well. But if you just said enemy manager, what the fuck does that do? I don't know. Jesus Christ, what was the original question? <laughs> <laughs> so far from it. So incredibly far. I think we, we were out of time. Actually. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that was it. Uh, you have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. Uh, this was a Q&A episode. It's not usually like this, but sometimes it is. It was fun. Yeah. Fun Function. Yeah. Well, I talk about programming concepts uh, every week. Uh, you should subscribe if you haven't. Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> and like the video as well. All, do give, all, it, give it the thumbs up. Do all YouTube. Do all these social media things. Uh, and uh, uh, I release these every Monday morning. 0800 GMT time. It's great. Uh, outros, <laughs> outros, are super, outros are super hard. Because uh, when when I do these, uh, like the yeah. normal episodes, I have like this list of things right. I need to say. Right. And I can say the intro like a hundred times until I yeah. get it right. Uh, but when we do these episodes, it's kind of like this free flowy thing. Yeah. So it's very jarring to go from from the free flow talking yeah. mode to the very exact yeah. outro mode. Yeah, like you need a. I guess you have a spiel. But if you just give your spiel and I just sit here, it's super weird. Like if I just sit here and look into the camera while you say you're not. No, maybe that's yeah, not. I mean it's it's super weird. Either way, until next Monday morning, stay curious, kids. Bye. <laughs> 
I did a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>